Welcome back, family and friends, gamers, and cat lovers. On last week's video, one of our viewers, the Cringe Prophet, asked me, what are your thoughts on Monster Hunter Rise? Well, hopefully my opinions won't make you cringe. Or maybe did you prophesize that the cringing was upon us? Because my thoughts on Monster Hunter Rise are more negative than positive. So this was a tough video for me to write out. I prefer to be a positive influence in the world. So I really had to gather my thoughts carefully. And if you're ready to cringe, let's do this. Well, let's ease into this and start with the things about Rise that look appealing. I like the addition of the Palamute. I was actually planning on making a video on would you like to have another companion other than a cat? But really, I mean, who wants anything other than a cat? <laughs> anyway, and it looks like Capcom is one step ahead of us. But hopefully in the future, they will allow more than just a dog and even allow us to have others like reptiles, such as the Jagras, Giros, and more. I also like a lot of the new movesets the hunters appear to have. And I'm looking forward to executing those new moves, especially with the hammer. The Palamute and the new moves are the two things I really look forward to with Monster Hunter Rise, without any conflicting thoughts. However, from here, I'll cover some things that attract me to the game, but also push me away. And it's not necessarily exclusive to Rise, but more about Monster Hunter as a whole. The series. Starting with new monsters. I'm excited that with a new game comes new monsters. And I wish it would just stay that way. Just brand new monsters, brand new weapons. No returning monsters or weapons. I've always kind of wished that each iteration of Monster Hunter would have its own unique set of monsters and we could go back and revisit these old games and feel like we were returning to different areas throughout the world. And speaking of areas, I like that we are hunting in a brand new place. It does have a uniquely different look to it from the other maps in the Monster Hunter series. But it's also sort of bland. And I know they designed it with more vertical gameplay in mind, but to me it looks more like Monster Hunter into the Spider-Verse. If they wanted to introduce more vertical gameplay, I would rather have had Underwater Hunts return. But I may like it when I finally get to try it. We'll see. Anyway, I also don't like that it has a heavy Japanese theme. We've been there already. Yukumo. I like how each village in the past all had a different feel, different theme. For example, Berna from Monster Hunter Generations had a Switzerland-inspired theme, but I can understand why they went with the Japanese theme as well. I'll get into that some more later in the video. But from here, I'm going to cover the two things I absolutely do not like about Monster Hunter Rise, and it has me considering giving up on the Monster Hunter series. One of those is the story. And I know that the story for the Monster Hunter series is not the greatest. I mean, we're not playing Monster Hunter for its story. But it's kind of always the same thing. You're the new guy or gal that everyone doubts but encourages, and then you save the whole village from some destructive monster, and then everybody loves you. And it looks like Monster Hunter Rise is set to deliver the same thing. Now, I'm not saying that they have to write the usual suspects, but I'd like something different each time. Something new. And I won't go into it in this video, but I have an idea for a different story that hopefully I'll release sooner than later. I hope you'll stick with me until then. But for now, let me share my last thought I have on Monster Hunter Rise. It is frustrating that it is only for the Nintendo Switch. Why was this not released on all platforms? I have grown wary of chasing Monster Hunter from system to system. I've been playing since the beginning, ever since they released it for the PlayStation 2 back in 2004. Back then, a roommate and I only had one copy of the game and no internet. But luckily, we had different schedules so we could play to our heart's content. But then they released Monster Hunter Freedom for the PSP. PlayStation Portable. Great. Gotta buy another system. But it wasn't that bad for my roommate and I. This was actually a great thing because we could finally play together for the first time. But then they came out with Monster Hunter Try and it was only for the Nintendo Wii. But I loved the game so much, I went and bought a Wii. But then after that, they released another Monster Hunter for the Wii U. 
It's the only American release I didn't play because I didn't want to fork over the money for a Wii U. Why couldn't they make a copy of Monster Hunter Try Ultimate for the regular Wii? Anyway, Capcom wasn't done. The next three Monster Hunter games all came out for the 3DS. There was a fourth. It was Generations Ultimate. And if you wanted to play that, you had to buy a Switch. Even though in Japan, they had Generations Ultimate for the 3DS. So in the end, instead of buying a Switch, I ended up buying a PS4. Two of them, actually. Because I had to get one for Rika and myself just so we could play Monster Hunter World. And now Capcom wants me to go buy a Nintendo Switch. Again, two of them, if Rika and I both want to play. I am tired of this. Capcom is the same company that makes Street Fighter. And they have made a copy of that for just about every system you can imagine. I really don't understand why we couldn't get a copy of Monster Hunter Rise for the PlayStation 4, Xbox, etc. Well, I shouldn't say I don't understand. I mean, I have an idea about what's going on. I know this is all business. I know it has to do with how many copies they think they can sell and whatnot. And I know Nintendo and Capcom probably have a deal. I also think this game is meant more for the Japanese market than it is Western markets. I read an interesting article about Nintendo and the Japanese game market while I was gathering my thoughts for this video. Even though a game may do well worldwide, they still consider their home market, the Japanese market, sometimes more important, and they may change their strategy to reflect that. If you want to read more, check for the link in the description. Anyway, you know how the Switch is also portable, and portable gaming is huge in Japan. This is why I understand why they gave the game a heavy ancient Japanese feel to it. But even though I understand all of this, it's still frustrating. If I want to play Rise, I will have to buy a Nintendo Switch. And it's why I may walk away from this series if I have to keep chasing it from system to system. But this wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. This wouldn't be the first time I've walked away from a game series. Games I have loved. I haven't completed a Legend of Zelda game since Ocarina of Time, or, or Ocarina of Time, however it's pronounced. I have retired from Final Fantasy after 12. I haven't played another Armored Core game since Silent Line. Or Resident Evil. I haven't played another Resident Evil since Resident Evil 2, and so many more. All of these games I've played since their introduction, and I have loved them. Now I cherish the memories I have with them. And these are my cringy thoughts on Monster Hunter Rise. Now it's your turn. What are your thoughts on Monster Hunter Rise? What are you excited for? Or does the game seem lackluster to you as well? Any thoughts you have, I'd love to talk about them. And until next time, thanks for watching. And thanks for subscribing.